Even someone who's mourning during Shiva, the week-long mourning period following the death of a close relative, has to recite the entire Korbanot and Shachit, including the Akidah, and all of the above passages that we've mentioned so far. We see from this that even in the unfortunate state that a mourner is in, he's still obligated, and he's not exempt, from reciting these passages. Some of us have the practice of reciting additional passages each day, such as the Ten Commandments. This is not included as part of the prayers, and it's generally recited by individuals on a voluntary basis. The custom of Sephardic Jews is not to recite the extra passages at all. In Masechet Brachot 12a, our sages taught that during the time of the Bet HaMikdash, the Kohanim used to recite the Ten Commandments each day. However, they decided against this practice in order to avoid the chance of unobserving Jews thinking that the Ten Commandments are more important than the rest of the Torah, and they might come to conclude that this is the only divine section of the entire Torah. When it comes to the Torah portion of the Ten Commandments being read in the synagogues, many communities have the custom to stand while the Torah portion is being read. The Rambam says that this is forbidden because, as mentioned before, people will think that this section of the Torah is more important than the rest, which is incorrect. Maran Lushon and Sion says that although it's forbidden, if we're found in a congregation where this takes place, we shouldn't instigate any arguments in the synagogue over this issue. There's also a difference of opinions when it comes to displaying the model of the Ten Commandments in the synagogue on top of the Ark. This falls under the same issue of the Ten Commandments seeming more important than the rest of the Torah. This is only a more or less concerning issue when the commandments are fully written out on this model. But since the common practice is to only display one or two words of each commandment, or in some cases, only the first letter, this doesn't cause a major concern. Another additional passage that some have the custom of reciting each day is the chapter of Manah, the belief that Hashem controls our food and livelihood. This, as well, isn't the Sephardic custom. If one wishes to do so, however, he may recite it after Shachit. The Talmud Yerushalmi says that if someone follows this practice, he won't suffer from any lack of food in his home. Sefer Hasidim teaches that we have to pray for our spiritual needs before our physical. And if we're to recite the chapter of Mana before Shachit, it would seem as if we're doing just that. According to this, it is permitted to recite it after Shachit. Some have the custom to say the passage of the Kiyo. This is the wash basin where the Kohanim would rinse their hands and feet before the offerings, as well as the passage of Tirmat HaDeshen. This is the removal of the burnt ashes from the altar, as well as the passage describing the golden altar. For Sephardic Jews, we don't recite these since they don't appear in the instructions given by the Elizad. Some observe the practice of reciting part of Perek Shira daily and completing it over the course of a week. Our sages said that anyone who does this is assured a portion in the world to come and that he won't forget his Torah learning. But the sages didn't just mean to read it, but rather to engage in it, meaning to give it much more thought and derive ethical teachings from its passages. It's also to remind and humble ourselves to realize how lowly of creatures we are in comparison to Hashem and to realize how much more we must strive to obey Him and worship Him.